Health inspectors of Reddit. What's the worst thing you've ever found when inspecting a restaurant slash shop? I can tell you what they didn't find. When I worked at Denny's, when the health inspector came, the cooks took all of the expired food out of the fridge and stored it in their cars and by the dumpster until the health inspector left and then they put it all back. I ended up quitting that job after I got written up for refusing to change the dates on the labels of all the expired food, which was one of the primary jobs of the graveyard server. I have never been so glad I can't eat at Denny's because of my allergies. That's incredible. Um, wow, that's really bad. Surely it's only up from here. Story 2. A tuna canning plant in Los Angeles was off of Terminal Island. The processing plant owned the entire island a few miles offshore. Needless to say, had to take a boat to the plant to look at some machinery that they needed repaired. We get to the plant and there are dozens of cats inside the plant, outside the plant, warehouse, etc. everywhere. Nobody said anything. They were even in the office building. After a few trips, I finally asked. One guy said in a joke, It's either rats or cats, and we don't have a rat problem. Story 3. Not a health inspector, but heard this story through a guy who services my soft serve machines. As info for those not in the ice cream business, most soft serve machines need to be cleaned, meaning fully disassembled, scrubbed, and sanitized at least weekly, some every three days. He got a call from a woman complaining that the vanilla side of her machine was coming out with black specks in it, was worried it might be grinding up an o-ring or worse. He took off the head of the machine and claims he nearly lost his lunch, as the barrel was infested with cockroaches. Apparently the woman had never cleaned the machine in the several months she had been open. Somehow the roaches got into it. At night, the barrel stops freezing and just keeps the mix cool so it returns to a liquid, and were being ground up and expelled as additional protein. How long has it been doing this? About a week. Ugh. Story 4. So many horrible Chinese restaurants in this thread, so I thought I would give a shout out to the one I used to work at years ago. The owner was meticulous about cleanliness. Every night the kitchen staff would scrub the floor and everything else down with soap and hot water. The dishwasher ran so hot you could see the steam rising and had to wait for them to cool down before you could touch them without burning your hands. That place was clean and served some of the best Chinese food. The owner eventually retired and sold his land. Boy, do I miss the hot and sour soup. I feel like the stereotype is that the... I don't know what to call it, the, the foreign ethnic cuisine, whatever you want to say, tends to have worse standards in their kitchens, but I don't know. I've definitely been to a Chinese place or two run by, you know, very Chinese people. And yeah, the kitchens and stuff, they weren't like the best. But at the same time, I've been to plenty where, I mean, I haven't been in the back. But like, I've known people who have been or worked in the back, and they said that it's fine. So I don't know where that stereotype comes from. That being said, I'm sure we're about to hear some horrible stories later down about Chinese food, so I'm gonna eat my words. And hopefully, not their food. Story 5. High-end Thai place in a popular tourist area. Go downstairs to the kitchen to open up their freezer. On the top shelf of the freezer, they're storing loose beef, pork, and chicken in three separate piles. The meat aren't in any containers. They are all sitting on a large piece of cardboard the restaurant had placed on the bottom of the shelf. We poke the cardboard, and our finger goes right through it. The juices from the three meats had turned the cardboard into pulp. We then noticed it dripping from the combined sludge of chicken, pork, and beef blood. From the looks of the cardboard, it had been dripping for a while. We look to the shelf below and see the results of the drip. Underneath the meats in the shelf second from the top, the restaurant was storing three buckets of ice cream without lids, directly under the meat drip. We look inside the ice cream containers and see congealed, partially frozen, cardboard-laced raw meat drippings pooled in the center of each tub of ice cream. None of the ice creams were more than halfway full. We ask the kitchen manager how long they've been storing their items like this. He doesn't remember. At least a few months. My theory is because the place was A, a nice restaurant, and B, an ethnic restaurant, patrons were less likely to complain about the odd flavors. For example, instead of complaining about blood in the ice cream, wondering out loud if that taste is star anise. That's one of the few inspections that made me physically sick. Place still got an A, because the restaurant grade system in my city is about as effective as the TSA. Bro, I don't know how you stick with your job after that, to be honest. I would just feel so bad seeing that and knowing that people are still being served it. Ugh. I don't know if I could take it. Story 6. So a friend of mine is a health inspector. She walks into a local convenience store and discovers a litter box behind the counter, totally unacceptable. Tells the proprietor that he needs to get rid of the litter box. That's kind of a health code violation. He replies, 
well, it's for the cat. We've been having mice slash rat issues. To which she's all, oh. Cat walks up. She tells him he can't have a cat in a food establishment. He hands the cat to his wife and she takes it out of the store to their camper trailer nearby the store. Waits for her to leave, rinse, and repeat. Story 7. Health inspector here, here are my top three. 1. An old liquor store, which had once been the front unit of a housing duplex, had now converted into a full-service deli, sandwiches, fried chicken, etc., without plan review, so they were severely lacking all the proper space and equipment. Observed were rat infestation, droppings everywhere, mountains of old cast-off equipment in the back, giving the rats a home, meat defrosting on the hood of an inoperable car in the side alley, back unit of duplex now converted to food storage had unfinished wooden boards on the floor, which were now soft and rotting from soaked up years of meat juice and everything else. 2. While inspecting a Chinese buffet, I noted to the employees that there were tubs of frozen fried shrimp stacked on top of one another without covers, so they needed to discard the top layers of the food and put on the tub lids. As they scrambled to do so, they knocked over the tower of shrimp, spilling it everywhere. As I was standing there, they hurriedly started scooping the shrimp off the floor and back into the tubs. I'm standing right here, guys. 3. A guy ordered commercial sausage-making equipment delivered to his private home. Manufacturer got suspicious and tipped off the health department. Turns out the guy would go hunting all sorts of exotic game meat without permits, and then process them into sausages in his rat-infested garage, droppings the size of jelly beans, and sell them to the public. Don't buy food from home cooks, folks. Story 8. So this is from the other side, but quite unique. A long time ago when I was in college, I used to maintain aquariums. Quite a few were in restaurants. There was an old school seafood restaurant that had a ton of tanks, great customers, and a cool place. I would be out there at least once a week for half a day making everything spotless. This was before cell phones, you youngsters. I'm in class and my pager, yes, pager, is blowing up from their number. I call and one of the Mexican staff picks up and all I could gather is, please Mr. Fishman, you come now, very big problem, emergency -a. I head out there and there are health inspectors there. So for all the tanks I take care of, if a fish dies, I ask the owner to put it in a bag and freeze it so I can take a look and see if I can figure out why it kicked the bucket. Well, one of their very old and very large and pretty beat up blue tangs, Dory, had died and they had froze it per instructions. The inspectors show up to the seafood restaurant and the first thing they see is this decrepit old fish that had been munched on by the other fish in the tank alongside the catch of the day. It was before opening and only the Mexican staff were there who had no idea how to explain it. I got it sorted out, but kinda funny. Story 9. Was a health inspector long ago. Was at a GC going through the kitchen area. As I was squatting down to check a dishwasher, my foot broke through the tile floor and into a sewer pipe that ran underneath. Cockroaches come boiling out of the hole. Turns out the entire floor was rotten from a water leak in the sewer pipe. Best slash worst part? The general manager tried to fight me when I told them they had to close down until they fixed the open hole into a pipe full of cockroaches and waste. I don't get why the general manager would be so upset about that. At some point you just gotta be like, yeah, that's so true. And what, repairing that couldn't take too long. Just like, expedite the process, maybe pay a little extra, be open sooner. It's, it's, you gotta do it. Story 10. In the mid-80s, I managed a pizza delivery store and the health inspector came by kind of late and asked me to step outside. He started by apologizing, but it was his job to follow up when they have a specific complaint concerning food safety, but this one was odd. He proceeded to tell me a customer complained that while they were in the store, two male workers banged on the counter and didn't even wash their hands. I just very dryly responded that that couldn't have happened, as we always wash our hands after banging on the cutting table. With a small grin, he said, oh, that's what he thought, and he appreciated our efforts. He was our inspector for several years after that. Story 11. Don't trust any restaurant. As someone who has an MPH and taken a number of food safety inspection courses, yet who eats out more than he should, it's tough. In the early slash mid 20th century, the restaurant industry was one of the few open to immigrants. Social stereotypes about minorities contributed greatly to the view that Chinese slash Mexican slash Indian restaurants are dirty. This view is unfortunately corroborated by a large amount of anecdotal evidence. There is a Chinese restaurant two blocks from me that has been cited with numerous health violations, and also a local Mexican restaurant which was closed down. Rest in peace, Margarita Mamas. The lesson, though, isn't to avoid Chinese or Mexican restaurants. It's to avoid any restaurant you don't trust. 
especially if they seem to have a strong incentive to cut corners. Make sure your food is cooked properly, temperature not pink in the middle, etc. If the front or bathrooms are dirty, that's a big red flag that the kitchen is also dirty. Also realize that every time you eat out, you're taking a risk. Story 12. I used to work on my own as a baker in a supermarket, and the cleaners would come in at 10pm at night when the last worker left, and he would be finished by 2am when I arrived. Well, one day I was half an hour early and I walked up to my department and the cleaner was mopping the prep tables and the equipment with the same water he had used to clean the floor. I wish I was joking. To use the mop on the tables to begin with is, is stupid. But he was using the same water as well? Insane. I told his boss when he came in because I simply had to, and his face was a picture. He really didn't believe me until I got him to have a look at the CCTV. Oh, I forgot. He wasn't even supposed to touch the machinery, by the way. That was my job. So he was dirtying my already clean equipment. Story 13. Not a health inspector, but I used to be a busboy at a nice Italian restaurant in my hometown. We had problems with the Chinese place across the street because we found out that they'd been taking the lettuce that we throw in the dumpster at the end of the night. Our manager used to stand outside and guard the dumpster so they wouldn't take our garbage. Another experience working at a local cafe. I was cutting up cheese from a walk-in fridge, and I found a hole in the cardboard box that the cheese was kept in. Turned out it was from rats or mice, and they were eating the cheese. Told my manager about it, and he told me to cut around the bite marks and still use the cheese. Left that job shortly after. Dumpster diving for ingredients for your restaurant is certainly a strategy. It is one tactic that you can use. I wouldn't eat there, though, personally. Story 14. I once finished up a foodborne illness investigation, not finding much that could have caused the illness and left. I parked my car on the side of the street in full view of the restaurant I was just at. I watched the dishwasher come out the back door, light a cigarette, smoke for a minute, then hunch over and puke all over the grass. Then he took another drag and went back inside. I have mild emetophobia, so I got a bit of a cold sweat, then ran across the street and basically dragged his butt outside. I've got a lot of stories, but that was the worst for me. Story 15. I found a quarter hotel pan under a condenser inside a fridge on the line at the Waffle House. During my training, I kept asking the manager why there was water pooling out of the fridge, why the waffle batter was sitting in a puddle, and why she was wiping it off with a towel for brushing crumbs off the sandwich board. She told me the night crew would fix it. They do a training regiment of first shift, then second, and then, if you were hired for it, you get put on your third shift. The reason being that the cook is in charge overnight, and the manager on duty is supposed to work at the line in the morning rush. Anywho, I got a two-day illness with the usual liquids coming out at both ends. I called out for my shift that was to begin in six hours, and told them to not expect me the next day. I'd gotten my roommate a job a couple weeks before then. He got sick the next day and called in with the same symptoms. They just fired him because of the probationary period. They called me shocked that I wasn't there, and I reminded them of the giant poster stating that it was illegal for me to work. The next day when I came in, she had the district manager there, and they said that I would be fired if I didn't sign a write-up for not clearly communicating with them. I told them that what they were doing was illegal, and scribbled on it the symptoms I had called out for. Well, I get on the night shift and get ready to deep clean. That is when I found the hotel pan. It was overflowing with water and filled with cultures of such large, distinct, and multicolored fungi and bacteria that I couldn't help but geek out. It was beautiful. I wrapped that bad boy up in plastic wrap and set it to the side. Got a new batch of cleaning buckets and towels and cleaned the rest of the equipment. I finished by giving that fridge a couple over with special care to clean the condenser. Then, I pulled out the beautiful hotel pan and just started snapping pictures. Joked around with the waitress and got her hyped to clean the windows, fixtures, and then taught her how to clean an ice machine. We went ahead and added all of the black rags from that to our photo gallery. I moved my way to the back and finished the storage fridges up and got the prep sink. It was supposed to be a three-stager and they had turned the actual prep sink into a mop bucket. By this point, the old men are lining the high bar for their coffee and flirting with my waitress. When the regional manager walks. See, the unit manager gets a day off, and the district manager goes from store to store covering that day. But the district manager also gets a day, and so the regional manager shuffles through all of his stores by covering the different district manager's days, covering the unit manager's days off. I gotta say, I think it's kinda cool that the guy making $120,000 flips eggs too. But he didn't think it was cool that it was 30 minutes to rush and the cutting boards were gone. Well, I told him a fun and exciting story, finished up sanitizing the boards, and then whipped out the photos. I think the best part was explaining how my symptoms, the epidemiology and casualness about standing water, led me to call the CDC tip line created to assist in the Legionnaires outbreak. 
that had been reported in the news that week. I'm not one for anonymity, and was a bit peeved at my manager writing me up for taking off the legally required time. I almost felt bad for getting the UM and DM salaries halved overnight, but I'll be damned if I didn't warn them over and over that they were breaking the Waffle House way, health code, and state law. They'd even hired me because I said I went to culinary school instead of high school, and 80% of cooking is cleaning. Plus, by that point, I knew beyond all doubt that their asses had caused three actual deaths, because they didn't want to lose a bonus. This is probably the most intense one in here, no? OP was in there collecting evidence and everything, making sure they could absolutely slam them with the facts. And they had probably straight up unalived people, which is crazy. I do kind of wish we got to see the fun-colored fun guy, though. Story 16. Ah yes, a specific restaurant that I came across comes to mind. Before I go on, let me say that there was nothing wrong with the food this restaurant was serving at all. It was the atrocious and criminal customer service that almost ended with me six feet under. As tradition in the health inspector business, I started off by ordering a bit of everything on the menu. Of course, this was mostly done to surprise the chef and keep him on his toes. We had to make sure the ingredients being used were fresh and prepared in a clean manner. Anyway, after my first order, I was catered to as if I was a movie star. Of course, this is common behavior as almost all restaurant owners make the waiters kiss up to you in hopes of a better scoring. This particular restaurant, however, was a bit too eager and was nearly spoon-feeding me, but I thought nothing of it at the time. And after politely asking them to leave me alone to do my job, I began to indulge in some of the most flavorful food I had ever tasted to this day. Everything was cooked to perfection, and the veggies? Fresh as ever. After having the food make love to my taste buds, I was nearly all done with my job and ready to give the restaurant a perfect score. However, there was one thing I hadn't tried on the menu. See, this restaurant was famous for having one of the best burgers around, and I, of course, had to indulge in it as a customer, not a health inspector. Of course, I wasn't going to tell them this. I asked them to bring the burger, and they eagerly did so. This was where things get a bit nasty, though. The burger, as far as I could tell, seemed normal, and I was dying to give it a bite. So I took my time to make sure I was prepared to taste the famous burger that had been recommended to me so much throughout the years by my peers and colleagues in the health inspector industry. I guess I took too long to take a bite, and a fly flew right into the back of my mouth like a bullet. I began to choke loudly and quickly motioned to one of the waiters for a glass of water, but they simply stood there watching me. I was confused and began to panic as I seemed to run out of air. My eyesight began to get cloudy and the room began to spin as I passed out. The next several hours are still a blur and I only remember bits and pieces, but even then I'm still confused on what's actually true and what my brain has made up from the trauma. All I know is I later woke up in the restaurant muddy with several gashes on my head and two police officers. My tip for all health inspectors out there, avoid the Krusty Krab. Yeah, by the time I realized this wasn't real, I would made it too far. So I read it out anyway. To be fair, it's a good, uh, it's a good retelling, you know? Even if it is kind of just a, a weird fan fiction. Seriously though, not sure if I would trust a crusty crab. Story 17. Not a health inspector, but I've seen some stuff. The worst was a restaurant a friend took me to. He loved it and said it was on him. But goddamn if it wasn't the sketchiest joint. If he hadn't spent the whole trip talking about how he eats there twice a week and loved it so much, I probably would have left. The place was disgusting. Mold on the walls, dirty floors, piles of unwashed dishes on the customer tables, etc. When we left, I happened to notice the health inspection sign. They had gotten a 36 out of 100. I didn't even know it was possible to score that low and stay open. Story 18. Not an inspector, but I worked at a sushi and hibachi restaurant for about a year as a server, host, and delivery driver. This place had a ton of things that were certainly questionable, but a few of them ended up causing me to full-on leave. In the dry storage area, they had cleaning chemicals directly above all of the to-go food packages and plasticware. In that same room, which was really big, I would randomly see a sleeping bag and pillow tucked away every once in a while. It always struck me as odd, but I never really thought about it too much until I went back to grab a bottle of wine and, sure enough, had stepped on a sleeping woman. She started to yell and I just ran out. My manager pulled me aside later, which I assumed was going to be a conversation about keeping that hush-hush, but no. The dude offered me $25,000 to marry a Thai chick so she could get a green card. My response to him was my two weeks notice. Offer of $25,000 though. You know, could be worse. OP, I think you missed out. The cleaning chemicals above the to-go packages though, that's, that's not good. Why not just keep them on the floor? They tend to be in like pretty uh, heavy containers, don't they? They should be like ground level. 
Anyway, that's all the time we have for today. I hope that you weren't eating, uh, I don't know, takeout or something while listening to this, because that would be upsetting. Or if you did and still managed to eat, that's impressive. All the power to you. Myself, I'm about to go eat takeout, so wish me luck. Thanks so much for watching, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.